Well, okay, let's get started. Uh, we had a pretty interesting week here at Pacific Head, and we did a merger with Imaginet. Uh, we have Pacific Head plus Imaginet better together. I've got a, several PowerPoints that I'm just going to kind of go through really quickly, and then we'll get into our customizing user coordinate systems for Civil 3D here. So, my name is Craig Batchelor. I'm a, a technical application engineer for Pacific Cab plus Imaginet. And Imaginet is an industry leading company whose expertise is in services and the leading expert in services. This is a discovery technology solutions, optimization professional services. And I'm going the wrong way here. And productivity and training and support. Uh, there's a holding company called RAND Worldwide that have different subsidiaries. We have Imaginet, which is an Autodesk reseller. The GeoLico system solutions, it does Archibus, it does Pix 4.3, uh, there's a RAND 3D, which is a Desult software solutions, and we create a lot of the, the courseware, SANT courseware for Autodesk, BCT, and Desult software. Across North America, there are now currently 40 offices. Uh, the offices we see here in red are Imaginate offices, and the blue represent the, the acquisition of Pacific Cat for a Spokane office and an Idaho office. Imaginate Pacific Cat offer professional services for consulting and data product life management cycle implementation and several other things here. They also have options for self-paced learning and online training. With the 40 offices, uh, imagine it is the largest Autodesk software provider. Uh, they are what we, what, what's known as a platinum partner, and they're a platinum partner in those specializations, certifications, and values that we can see down the left side of that screen. Also, there's a, a proven performance for implementations, and, and they're award-winning and customer satisfaction as well. Um, the people that are used to buying software in suites, it's now called industry collections. It's now broken down to architecture, engineering, and construction collection, the product design selection, and the media and entertainment collection. Um, I'm not a salesperson, but they, they gave me the screen. and say, you can save 30% of a three-year subscription if you order now through April 21st, 2017. And again, it's a Pacific Cat plus Imagine It is better together. Okay, now we'll get into what we came here for. This is uh, a little bit of a syllabus of what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be creating a custom coordinate system for Civil 3D. Once in a while, we look at the coordinate systems that are available for us and we probably have wish lists. So can we make it this coordinate system or that coordinate system? So what we're going to do is show you a process of how you can research available information for, for known coordinate systems that, that aren't shipped with the program. We're gathering information. Uh, we're looking at some conversion options and some formatting options of how to get that successfully, a successful coordinate system inside of Civil 3D. Civil 3D is built on top of a program called Map 3D, where we have a, 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 a wizard that can create coordinate systems. And we've got the option of starting with a coordinate system that's existing. We might be changing a false northing or, or a, 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 an origin latitude. Or start from scratch. And there's different ways that we can do that. We're going to be looking kind of at 30,000 feet at that that wizard right now, we will be creating a coordinate system, but it's, it's one of many different types of coordinate systems that we can create. 
to create the coordinate system, we are going to use the Map3D wizard. And once we've created it, we're going to show a process of how do I check the coordinate system to make sure that it worked. Once I make a custom coordinate system, where in Civil 3D is that, that system stored? And if I have a really nice coordinate system, how do I share that with other machines? These are questions that have been uh, been asked over the last year with people that have been creating these custom coordinate systems. You know, they want to be able to share them with other people. They want to make sure that they know where it is. And then we're going to look at that. Our goal here is once the system is made, it will be in a drawing. And wherever that drawing goes, that coordinate system will, will reside with it. For today's webinar, we're going to be looking at the, the Argon Coordinate Reference System. Uh, the, the OCRS handbook is, is a guide that has 37 coordinate systems pertaining specifically to the state of Oregon. The reason I'm using this as a reference is there's a lot of terrain elevation difference in, in a, a, a coast state like Oregon. And just an Oregon north zone and an Oregon south zone didn't really give us the accurate information that we do. So if we can get our, our latitude a little bit closer to where our job is for a start point and then, and then come up with a, a, a longitude median line and set a, a, an assumed either 5,000, 5,000 coordinate system or, or a known coordinate system to set a zero, zero closer to the site, we should have a little bit more accuracy. Um, when we start getting into those millions, uh, we, 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 we kind of lose a little bit of the accuracy. So the, the system was developed of 39 unique maps that are more localized for, for counties or certain areas. The coordinate system we're going to do inside the OCRS is the Salem Zone Information. And Oregon works in international feed. Um, this information right here tells me what my my, my central meridian is, it's going to be at um, 123 degrees 5 minutes west. And from that point, I'm going to set a false easting of 50,000 meters so that so that, that becomes my, my zero, zero is on that central meridian, the, the latitude line of origin, and the false easting. There's a scale factor involved uh, that, that's preset into this, so I'm not having to do combine grid scale factors as I make this, it should be pretty close. And the type of coordinate system we're going to make is, is called a transverse Mercator projection based off a of North American datum NAT83. And the previous map has grids shown in units of international feet. So the first thing I really do is kind of research and, and, and find information. So I found this, this PDF that has pretty much all the information on this, this one sheet uh, of how I can create this coordinate system. If I look in the, the center bottom of the screen, it says linear distortion. Because I've got elevation gains throughout even this local system, it's telling me a color-coded map that we're going to look at in a second here, how close I have to parts per million, how far off I could be parts per million. So it's yeah, if I'm looking at uh, a quarter of a foot per mile, we can see how it's, um, that's, you know, our, our goal is to get into this green area right here. If I get that 10 parts per million or 10 to 20 parts per million. So here's how the map looks with this projection system. Everything I see in green and light green is going to be, you know, 10 parts per million. That's a, a, a fairly, fairly accurate. That's definitely going to get me close on the head of a pin for, for, for surveying. What I see in blue is going to be a minus because I've got some elevations. That's like, that goes to the minus 50. Some of the other colors are just a little bit, little bit farther out, but that's a nice illustration. Uh, oh, that's a little back one. To the screen right here, we can see those colors represent the accuracy of of the area that I'm at for this, this map. Um, what I'm doing is I'm setting an, an origin of latitude. And in this case, we can see that it's set at 44 degrees 20 minutes north. That becomes a zero. So if I'm an international feed, that would be the zero. 
The central meridian line that runs north-south is set at 123 degrees, five minutes west. And what I'd need to do then is set what we call a false easting so that I can, I can survey on both sides of that particular line. But that's kind of the center line of, of this, this area. So in the bottom left of the screen, you can see that I have an international foot coordinate system that says zero, zero. As it's coming up, I've got a 50,000, 100,000 across the bottom, and it looks like I'm in 15-minute 15, uh, 15 increments for my lat long on the side. We can see that I've got the 44 degrees, 30 minutes, zero seconds north for my, for my, uh, my lat long. And we'll test out these, uh, these grids when we've created this system. If you notice that it says 50,000 meters west, well, we're working in international feed. So here's some useful sites for conversion from lat long uh, to decimal degrees, minutes, and seconds, and how to convert metrics to feet. Now, this particular site I found converts meters to, to uh, imperial feet, um, but there's, uh, there's plenty of sites that it'll convert it to, to U.S. survey feet for anybody else in the world besides Oregon, I guess, or North America. Uh, I'm going to show you these these uh, these sites right now. Um, I, I just kind of show you the process of how we're, if I look at is the, the lat long site, and I type in 44 degrees 20 minutes, and I get for my longitude, I've got the, the, the west, so it's minus 123 uh, with five minutes. And if I hit my conversion, these are the numbers that I'm going to need to create my coordinate system. I also have a map down here to make sure that I'm kind of close to where I, where I should be. You know, if, I, if I put this as just 123 instead of the minus, and hit a convert, then I end up in Mongolia or China or something. So. It's, it's kind of helpful to have the map to make sure that I don't have a way of writing west in here. So if I put a minus, that's kind of my west from, from Greenwich, England. So if I convert, if this looks like it's pretty close, these numbers right here are numbers that I'm going to be using uh, because we, we, we did have a, uh, a latitude of origin and we did have a central meridian, which are these numbers right here based on our, our previous screen. I've also got a meter to feet conversion. This is another website that I found. And what's nice about this is I can put many decimal places. A lot of the sites just give you, you know, three or four. I want some, some kind of an accurate conversion right here. So I typed in the, the, the false easting, which is 50,000 meters. And this is the translation that I got. So this is another number that I'll be using when I create these, uh, when I create this, this, this system. So um, where are my coordinate systems stored? Um, we have some default coordinate systems that, that ship with the program. And uh, they're stored in, in a, you see program data, or whatever the drive letter is. It's an Autodesk folder, and there's a geospatial coordinate system. I'm looking for the 2017, and the, the folder is called 14.03. There's a, you know, the 16102, the 15101. So each of these are updated. If you do create custom ones, they are stored in a separate place. They're going to be on, uh, custom coordinate system is going to be on, on the user's login, and the app data local. And under there, we have a folder called Autodesk, and we have user geospatial coordinate systems. And this is just going to store the, the custom coordinate systems that you create. So if you go from 2014 to 15 to 16 to 17, you can copy those user coordinates uh, to, to the next versions and then they'll, they'll stay, you can stay pretty current with it. Um, that's, it's interesting that they've got two different places, but that, that's kind of the process. Once I have a coordinate system in a drawing, I can set a coordinate system in a template. It's one that you use all the time. If you're just say, I don't know, Marion County or City of Salem, and that's just the coordinate system that you would use, you would make that part of the template. So every, every time you open a drawing, it would, it would come into that coordinate system. 
once we created the coordinate system, this is a little reference check. And what I could do is you can see that uh, in, in single 3D, I can set reference coordinate systems on a job. So I can set one for lat long. If I'm looking uh, not south on the side, I can see that I've got that 44 degrees, 15 minutes, and then, and then that 44.30, I believe, is where, where, where things started for this job. And then if, if I got zero with 50,000 feet, coming across from my precision of 50,000 feet, I can use the current map coordinate system and I can set a, a, a reference grid on. And that's just kind of a way of verification of, of, of what we got going on here. So let's get to civil 3D and let's start working on this. So I have a civil 3D 2017 app right now. I've just uh, uh, behind the scenes, I just opened up a brand new drawing. This is a default ship with the program um, uh, template. It's National CAS standards, in, uh, NCS Imperial. That uh, ships with the program. I got nothing special. I just opened a new drawing and I just saved it as new coordinate system webinar. We can see that I am in Civil 3D right now. And what I do is to create a coordinate system. My goal is, you know, if I have a settings tab right here. And if I right-click on my drawing name, I can edit my drawing settings, and I'll have a coordinate system show up here of the custom one that I made. That's my goal. And what we're going to do is go through some of the steps of how we can get that. So Civil 3D is built on top of Map 3D, which is built on top of AutoCAD. So all of my Map 3D commands and all of my AutoCAD commands work in Civil 3D. If I do pull down my workspace settings, I can I can transfer to my planning and analysis. And again, these are all right out of the box ship coordinate systems. And this is my map 3D um, workspace. I got several several tabs in here, and it looks slightly different than my civil ones. Uh, this is kind of a scary place if this is something that we don't do all the time, but. Uh, a little bit of orientation we can find out. It's kind of intuitive. What do I want to do? I want to set up a map. So if I go to one that's called Map Setup, I have coordinate systems right here. Now this works slightly different than, than Civil 3D. If I click on Assign here, I can find a coordinate system. If I type Argo, in here. You can see it's going to yellow highlight everything down here where that word came in. And it's going to give me all of the available coordinate systems. I'm interested in coordinates that have international feed. So if I check on that, you can see that these are my international feed coordinate systems from Oregon. And I've got uh, EPSG code numbers for the, for the ones right here. But you can see that there's a few that I've made myself that I've not got an assigned ESPG number. Um, and I've made them a couple different ways. And what you really need is we need to come up with a name. We need to come up with a, a, a description and how we're defining it. If I click on one of these, let's look at uh, Oregon State North Plain International Feed, which is a, uh, this is a genesis of one that we're going to be creating here. If I hit View, And that's one of the screens that, oh, here we go. It's going to tell me about this coordinate system. Okay, so it's going to tell me about my projection. My projection has a, a latitude where it's starting, and it has what we call a false eastern. So there's going to be, this is my longitude line right here. And from that line, I want to go this many feet to the east of it, or to the west of it. That's where my false is. And that's, that's what's going to create my zero, zero. Um, I've got this in a, a elaborate, configurable, double standard parallel. And I'm using, a, we're going to make it slightly different. But and if I've got parameters, it tells me what my minimum and maximum is for these. And it creates something that's called a packet, a WKT. And this is kind of what we're looking at. It's what we, you know, the ESRI packet right here. And as we go through a wizard to create this, it's going to ask us questions, and we just kind of fill in the blanks of what these parameters are. What's my latitude of origin? What is my yeah, uh, 
what's my central meridian, what's my false E state. So as we go through, we'll, it's going to ask us these questions, and we have that on our screen uh, out of that, that PDF book. For datum, I'm using a GRS 1980 geographic reference system for ellipsoid. For a code, I'm using a NAT 83, and then this is the ellipsoid information. So that's kind of what they look like. And what we need to do is, is do a little bit of translation and get the information that we want. So if I go to, let's see. Um, I'm going to have that open somewhere, just one second. Here we go. So, with these two sites that I had, my, my 50,000 meter conversion translated to this number, and that's a number that I put in right here for my false easting, because I'm starting at 50,000 meters uh, to get zero. Um, I need a, a projection of a, a, a transverse Mercator. That's the one that was used on that one sign. What I might do is reference back and forth to the to the PDF so we can see that. I do have a central meridian. Remember, we had to put the minus in there or we end up in Mongolia. I got a scale factor of uh, you know two you know, several digits with with the one being after five so five hundred thousands, and I've got the latitude of origin. And these two numbers right here, we had ours in degrees, minutes, and seconds, but when I, when I create them, that's why I kind of mention these sites, is I kind of need them in this, this format as I create them. It's 983 with that 1980 geosphere, and then I need to give it a name, and, and, and so on and so forth. So let's, uh, let's go through the process right here. I might, I might reference this and copy clip some of these in as I make this. So I'm going to close this down. I'm still in my new coordinate system webinar, and over here, at, beside a sign, I do have a library of, of pre-created ones, and I have a create right here. So if I pull this down, I can create a coordinate system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start my wizard, and I'm going to just create a coordinate system. So I hit next. I can start with a coordinate system, or I can start with a datum. And I've got some of the information that I want in that NAT83 North International feed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that and then just change it to the information that I do need. Um, I don't know really if this is the best practice, but if somebody's created one, uh, it's good to, to reference it if you know what the differences are and we can just change a few numbers on it. So let's start with the coordinate system. If I hit Next, I've got to create a new coordinate system. Basically, it could be projected geographic or arbitrary. I'm going to create one from an existing coordinate system. So if I hit select, I'm going to do the Oregon 83 North Zone International Feet. And I'm going to hit select. And I'm going to go next. So now I need to give it a name, right? And this one right here, this is a, it's an Argo Coordinate Reference System, OCRS, Salem. And I'm going to call it IF, International Feet. And I can give it a description here. And, and I, I, I can't type, if I, if I can here and I add some more, that, that's about as many characters as I can put in a description. And this is going to be the defining thing that I can find it. When I, when I went and searched and typed something in, Oregon came up because I had the word Oregon right here. So I'm going to change this first part right here, and I'm just going to call this, this is my, my OCRS um, Oregon, well, let's just change this. If I go... OCRS Salem, and then it says it's international feed. I've got a source, and then my units here, I can, I can create coordinate systems in several different units. We are going to use the international feed uh, 
if you are in your know, survey feed, it should be in my list right here, and I should be able to find it. It's, uh, I guess, you know, page one, right at the beginning, is going to have the U.S. survey feed. So if that's what you want to do, and then what I want to do is, when we were in several, I pulled down U.S. Oregon, and I had a list of those available coordinate systems. I can I can add this to a subfolder of USA Oregon. So if I pull my USA Oregon down, this uh, OCRS Salem IF would be in this folder. Um, I've got my ellipsoid for 1980, and I've got this 983 for the datum that I want to start. Now I'm going to say I just started with this, but that was a that was a parallel system, and I'm using a, a transverse cadence. So what I'm going to do is on the next page, instead of having the double standard parallel for projection. I can pull this down and pick my transverse Mercator. It's going to say it's going to give me a different set of parameters that I can change because of the projection strategy. If I do go back a page, nothing really changed on this page. It's still got the same name. It's still calculated the same way. So in here, I do have a central meridian. I do have a, an origin latitude, and I do have what we call a false easting. So I've got a line that's sent down, and then a line where my, my origin of my latitude starts. Then where the, where the projection line coming down for, 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 for latitude and longitude, that would be the zero, zero. And what I could do is I could set a false easting, and I could set a scale on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my my cheat sheet right here of things that have already been converted. And it's asking for a false easting. So if I go over here, I do have this false easting. That's going to copy clip that number and I'll paste it in here. It's always good to have a, a, a notepad or a Word doc and, and kind of sort out the information that you do need uh, rather than trying to figure this out on the fly. So that's like, you know, What's, what's predicted here is I'm going to have a false northern and a false eastern. If I have an origin of latitude, then, then I want that to be zero, because that's going to be my northern. If I go back to my, my sheet here, and we'll, we'll pull in a couple of others here. So my central meridian, let's say I've got central meridian here, remember we're going to put the minus or be a Mongolia, right? So if I grab that, this is where my central meridian is. And it won't let me paste it. Oh, well, no, i got to actually type that one in. Let me pull that back up again. And I'll just type that in. So it's minus one, one, two, three, no, zero, eight, three, 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 repeating until I run out of spots. And I can keep on hitting that. It's going to stop at where it was. This one kind of rounded up the last one to seven, but you can see that's a, that's a repeating. For my false easting, we, uh, we did the false easting already. The latitude of origin, so if I come back over here, I'm going to have a, a latitude of origin right here. I remember it was, it was 44 and 20 minutes, which is a third of a an hour, so that's kind of what that third comes in. I'm going to try to copy clip again of this. This is origin and latitude. Did not paste, so I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'll type that one in. And that's 44. So right, right away, as we can see, that I'm getting closer to the design site by, by going from latitude of 43 to 44. And then I had, this is my scale right here. And if I looked at that, that one sheet, if I go back, it said this is actual. This is the actual scale. So I'm going to put my scale in here. This is going to be 1, dot zero, 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 one, zero. And I've got some information here that, that seems to be kind of what I need for this sheet. So again, there's several types of projection. If it, the sheet calls out a projection, I can change it. It's going to give me some parameters I want to change. I need a central meridian. That's going to be my, my, my northern 
willing, and I need a latitude of origin so that I can get what the zero, zero is, and then I'm going to offset it so that I'm not, half my site's not going to be in the negative numbers. Uh, common parameters, it's like x equals the east. You see I've got my x and the y. This is x right over here. It's going to be an easting number, and y is going to be a northern. That's, that's a very, very typical of, of what we do right here. That's AutoCAD. Um, and then I've got minimum, maximum, last, minimum, maximum, long, so that I can put in here. Um, and if something doesn't work right, then that's probably what I'd do is I'd, I'd either increase the range or decrease the range so I've got something that I want. Uh, I can also have a useful range, hard zone, and I can actually set an X and a Y for useful ranges right here. And this one's going to show up a little bit. A little bit smaller. I'd have to check and see how I did that. But that's 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 this is this is where the troubleshooting thing is. I could add, since I've got my my start place right now, I might want to set the range of x's and y's from that. You know, obviously I might not be collecting at where zero zero is because it's fifty thousand meters away from uh, where my site probably is. But I could change these numbers. And what I do is I get a packet. So this is my user defined packet. And if I scroll down here, I can verify my, my settings right here. And this, is, this looks very similar to we, 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 we opened up a, a coordinate system for review. And this is kind of the information that we saw. And this is my WKT information. And what I usually do is I can copy clip that. I can paste that next to my, my goal and just make sure that I've got, got these, these set. And this is international feed. It's going to go in the category of Oregon. It's, and that's a and not 83. It's not so far. So once I've got it made, it I can hit finish. So I'm I'm kind of remoted in up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an AutoCAD line. No, let's actually set it first. So. A coordinate system was created, and I believe I called it uh, OCRS Salem IF International Feed. If I go in here, and I might have made this more than once, so if I type OCRS, this is the one I did just made, the International Feed one. So if I assign that to my drawing, that's assigned in my drawing. Once the coordinate system is assigned, and if I am if I am mapped into A360, I can turn my map on. What I would do is if I draw a line from zero zero, right, that zero zero should fall on the map. So if I turn my map on, you can see that it fell in the map. This this right here fell in the map. And you can see that that's the coordinate system I made here's where you know, and it, it's far enough out, my um, Marion County probably starts about here, so it's, it's kind of not Pacific Ocean, but it's definitely outside of it. If I do turn my map with hybrid on, we can see, uh, you know, here's my I-5 corridor, here's Lafette, Jefferson, uh, there's Salem, and uh, so on and so forth. So th this is the coordinate system that, that I'm looking for. Yeah, that's for the start point. Um, once I have that, there's a way of capturing an area. I'm just going to show you the process. You can capture an area, and we can uh, select the captured area. And I could change the optimus, optimization of that. And then I could test that out in a drawing, and then I could test it out with coordinate systems. So what I have here is, in the process, is if I go over to my OCR Salem drawing right here, this is where my zero zero is on the map. If you look at, if you look down here at my my line down here, if I kind of hop over that spot, we'll see that I'm pretty pretty close to zero zero right here. Um, and then the map comes this way for a distance. It comes this way for a distance. Um, if I select here, I have what we call reference systems. If I select my uh, the border, and I set this to a, a 20,000 feet scale. Um, if you look at this, 
there's my zero and my zero for this this sheet. If I go to the other side, it's my zero zero is starting at somewhere between 2015 and 2030. When it was like it was like it was 4420, which is right here. So I've got these set up in feet, and I've got the site up here set up in uh, in my lap and long. And that's just a it's a verification. My goal is to have this look like let me get my, my sheet. That's not gonna show. Uh, take a second here. No, it's not. But I like that one, right? So this is where the zero zero is. This comes up to forty thousand. This is where my forty thousand is, and then I've got this set. So that's how I test it, just to make sure that zero zero falls in with a reference. If I have a reference, I know that if I'm collecting right here, my numbers are a lot less than a million right now, and I've, I've got a good chance of uh, keeping my accuracy for a local coordinate system. Um, the the way I Create this. If I, oops, yeah, Maybe over here. Just the second one. Yeah. For some reason I'm locked up. If I'm in. There we go. Yeah, the classic way of ending a webinar. I just crash out of it. So hopefully we learned a little bit about coordinate systems today. Um, we could we could use uh, I use Google a lot to find out as much information about something that I that I want to to create. I, I research it. I I, uh, I make notes uh, of what I want to do. Sometimes I record the websites or I'll save them as so that I know where. I found something, and you know, I can keep a history of how you created that. So if something wasn't quite um, looking the way you wanted, then then you've got a a good chance of uh, you know going through your notes and then redoing it and, and and so on and so forth. That's what I got for you guys today. It's uh it's about uh, twelve ten. We've got about forty minutes here. Um, I was I would open this up for questions. As if I've crashed out, so I won't be able to really illustrate anything. Hopefully, you learned something. Uh, again, Pacific CAD and Imagine It are together stronger as one. And uh, look at Pacific CAD's page or, or Imagine It's page for information about this webinar, previous webinars, or up and coming webinars. Thank you.